Hey there, Sharon Hornell from here. Welcome to day 1966 of What You Have to Know. Documenting the journey and sharing my experiences in both offline and online businesses um, since 2018 now, every day here on, on Facebook or on LinkedIn or on whatever social media platform you might be catching me on. Uh, started doing it when I first came on, not when I first came online. I was online for well over a year before I was uh, got up the gumption to actually do a live video. Like everybody else, live video is scary, you know, showing up and especially showing up every day, no matter what's going on in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly is challenging at best. But I've also found that it keeps me moving forward during crazy things like the COVID pandemic and other times when you want to just say, no, I don't feel like doing it today, but you just get up and you do it anyway. That's one of, uh, I think the secret things that I've learned over my decades of business experience and life experience is even if you don't feel like it, you have to get up and go. You have to get up and keep moving toward what it is that you want. That's part of what this year's challenge is all about, the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. I want to thank Chad Hanna for suggesting that we focus on goals this year. Uh, it's something I, I haven't really shared with other people. I do it all the time, but doing it for decades. Uh, setting goals, my dad taught me when I was a little girl, the importance of setting and writing down our goals and knowing what we're working toward in order to create the life that we want. And I learned from a lot of, of uh, amazing teachers and mentors and coaches over the years the importance of goals, different ways of achieving goals. So it's a really fun topic to share with everybody this year. So we're focusing on financial well-being and financial health this month. We're, we're using a nine-part framework that I've used just the nine parts since 2021. I added confidence and communication to my core skills, core values, core areas that I set goals and objectives in. Uh, with respect to like long-term legacy goals and then I break those down into annual goals etc so and then monthly weekly daily what can I do every day to move me toward what it is that I want I'm sharing that whole process here in or not necessarily here but in the, the get your goals annual challenge We're doing one thing every day to get what we want so financial well-being financial health financial goals are what we're talking about this month the whole month of June and we're focusing on key indicators right now I think there's seven or eight key indicators and there's probably more you can measure things any way you want but I'm sharing some of the most common ones because just like our physical well-being it's very objective and easy to measure whether we're achieving our financial goals or not right and whether we're making progress toward them or not so I want to share some of the ways of measuring that and today we we're talking about savings to go along with that, our idiom is penny wise and pound foolish, which I love this little pound exercise ball. And I have a jar of change that I, I save and collect to, to do fun things with my granddaughters. Used to do, a, I'd save up my change for my kids. I started doing it in college. I'd carry around, I'd throw change in my backpack till my backpack got so heavy I had to dump the change out. Then I would cash it in and I'd do something fun. Sometimes we'd have a party, sometimes we'd just go out to dinner, whatever. And I do, I still do the same thing today. There's good habits that we form that we should carry throughout our life. And that was my little cheat way of saving change so that's an example of how we can make saving automatic I have found that when it comes to certain key indicators especially financial I need to make things automatic and so that I don't have to think about them. anything I do routinely over and over and over again I like to automate so that I don't have to repeat the same things over and over and over again that's just me uh, but pennywise and pound foolish I don't think I've ever used that particular expression except when sharing it as an idiom uh, it just means don't pay so much attention to the little things and the minutia and the small things that we're forgetting about the big things, the big goals, the big picture. So it's a good idiom. It reminds us, and that's why I like doing these idioms, is it reminds me to think about things consciously that I probably am overlooking or forgetting to think about. I, like so many other people, get sucked into the details and the drama sometimes, and I forget about what's really important. And I think it's always good to remind ourselves, what are our core values? Where are we going? What's our big direction? That's why I like goals. Hey, if I ever get off track or if I'm ever having a hard time making a decision or a choice, I just have to ask myself, number one, how does it make me feel? Number two, is it moving me toward what I want or away from what I want? Or if I'm just staying the same, why would I spend the time and energy doing that thing if it's not going to help me make progress? And so it makes decision making and choosing and deciding how we're going to spend our limited resources, especially time, in the best way for us. So love to know, have you heard this idiom? Have you used this idiom? Did, you know, you might have parents that use this idiom. I, I don't know if my grandparents ever used it. I, I don't probably 
because they were around during the depression so they may very well have I just don't remember because I was a little kid that's it if I can help you anyway please ask otherwise have an awesome new week it's the beginning of a new week and again if I can help you ask otherwise I will of course be with you tomorrow have an awesome day